Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. You know what? I had so much fun the other day building the Abyssal Dwarves that just came out for Mantic's Kings of War Vanguard. I had to go ahead and get the booster box for it. I just couldn't help myself. And let's take a look. We've got a big, crazy, flaming volcano golem with a cannon, a weird beetle icon thing, and then a Imperial Guard looking dude with a halberd. So, as far as I know, these are all resin models. Yep, I can read it says resin models there in English and then in a bunch of other languages that I probably would butcher if I attempt to speak them. So I won't. We have, what is this? I didn't even say what they are. Can you guys read it that small? I can't. Let's open it up. So I want to say that this is actually a character model. It's not just a regular abyssal golem. And I have no idea. We'll find out. Let's open it up, right? So in case I'm saving that this time, I'm so irritated I toss these uh, when I open the warband. So I do like these new box setups that Mantic's been doing. At least it's recyclable versus the what we all affectionately call the VHS boxes. The plastic ones that seem to crack and break every time we wanted to use them. So we have two containers. Oh. This is all sticky. Not that I don't have a million Kings of War bases. Okay, so somebody's on the 20, a 25, and floaty bases. Interesting. Alright, let's take a look. And, okay. We have a 40mm MDF base as well. Taking a look at what's included, because I don't know what to call these things, we have the hex caster. That goes on the 25mm base. Okay, that's got the flaming icon. It looks like it actually attaches through it. We'll find out in a sec. Charnox! Charnox the Golem! That's a 50mm. Huh, alright, fine. So, you have two options for Charnox. You can run them as a regular Golem, or as the upgraded character model. Now, let's take a look here. Oh, interesting. Okay. There's a difference of about three points, but then this guy is a little bit stronger and has smash and throws a lot more dice in melee, but obviously Charnox here has ranged as well and has his magma launcher, so that's interesting. Hmm. He does not have the hard as nails. Okay, well, it's good to have options, isn't it? So what else? We have the Immortal Guardian. Ah, he's supposed to go as the Immortal Guard. That's the one I was thinking about for the old set. Okay, the Immortal Guard. That's a big jump in points, but this is also a command model. So, okay, cool. He goes on the 20mm base. And then we have random gargoyle cards included. I have no idea why, but I will take them. I don't know if that's in every kit. Maybe, maybe not. I do believe I have some gargoyles that came in the Abyssal Warband, so that's nice. Also, I know that uh, Avatars of War, I believe, makes some plastic harpy slash gargoyle models, so that might be something to include as well. Alright, this is, what was he called, the Hexcaster? Yeah. With his, ooh! Flaming runic icon that needs to be cleaned up a little bit and is on flames. So it looks like I'm guessing that this is just kind of standard issue plastic rod and support base for the clear bases and the rods because I think I'm just going to need the rod to actually attach the rune onto this bug thing. <laughs> and then here's his legs. I do appreciate the fact that these are labeled left and right. Left and right. So hopefully I don't forget that. Alright, this looks like our Immortal Guardian. With his Blade of the Immortal. <laughs> I haven't read that in years. I tried to read it in Japanese and it was so freaking hard for me. Now he's got some really ornate armor. Especially compared to the original guys. I don't know, he is a fancy man. He 
Even his axe is fancy. See the little runes on it there. And then we have his cape. Because what fancy man goes out in public without any kind of a cape? Okay, cool. That must mean that this other bag is entirely our golem friend. Chordox! He needs to have some kind of title. Chordox the Thirst Quencher. Something. A big. Good size to him. Remember people would always complain about, Oh, Mantic models are too small. They don't fit in with my Games Workshop stuff. Well, I'm glad we can put that thought to the rest. I think that, yeah, it goes like that. Okay. Chunky. I mean, this is a good, good heft to it. Good chunk. Now, I wasn't ever a big fan of the original... Lesser Obsidian Golems. I remember when they were just the Obsidian Golems because the greater one hadn't come out yet. They looked weird. And not in a good way. I like weird, usually. They're boilerplate bellies and stuff. So this guy's going to be a challenge for me to paint. I have about three other models, including Cronius, which was like the very first model I think I ever put up on YouTube. And he finally got primed a year later, but the reason he hasn't gotten painted along with a couple of things from Shadows of Brimstone that are much like our friend... I forgot his name already. I just said it, too, dude. Croniax? No. Charnox, dude! Come on. I can't believe I forgot. Charnox! Anyway, the whole rock and lava thing has been a challenge for me to get done in a way that I'm satisfied with and doesn't end up with me losing my sanity trying to finish putting it all into a decent paint job. At least on the plus side, this is pretty easy to clean up, and it doesn't look too complex to build. So give me a sec, and let me clear all this out of here. We'll get some glue, and we'll show you how they stack up to the rest of the Abyssal Warband that hopefully I can find where I put them. So sit tight. So we finished building our booster pack here, and we've got the Immortal Black Guard, or whatever he's called. I'm pretty sure that's what he's called. Right here, really nice model. I did not glue his cape on, and honestly, you could probably almost get away with just filling in the gap there. He, do, he, duh, he does have that skirt armor detailed all the way around, but just a really, really nice resin bit. Went together nice and fast and easy, which we always appreciate. We're having another Abyssal Dwarf, just to give you an idea of how big he is. Fits right in. Grabbing our hex caster next. I was really worried about his legs, but despite my worries, everything seemed to fit okay. Obviously, I have not glued all this down yet just because of that transparent stick that is in his back. I still don't know what this bug's deal is, but he's got that flaming brand attached to him. I should probably just keep you on the screen. But then the highlight is our big crazy golem friend here. So you can see he is quite the big boy. Not as big as an automaton from Conquest, but still quite big and impressive, especially when you have the other Abyssal Dwarves in tow. So I'd say getting this set, you have a lot of nice options for what you can do and mess around with as an Abyssal Dwarf Warband. And, you know, the more options, the merrier, I always think. And, again, I, I can't help but just comment as often as I can. The quality of Mantic's resin just continues to impress, just like on the Immortal and even on the little Hexcaster guy. Really clean, crisp casts, easy to go together. Honestly can't complain. I really enjoy building these guys. And I really look forward to attempting to paint all of that volcanic black rock that I hate doing because I never do a nice job. So, eh, what the hey, we'll give it a try, right? So, definitely jazzed about getting these guys ready and on the table. Especially now that I have so much time to stay at home and do a whole lot of nothing except paint these. So, with that said, this is High Lord Tamerlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. And thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.